Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, here to talk to you about the self-managed infrastructure at the Untethered Edge. This, this talk, uh, which will include two separate videos for demos, uh, really talks about why RackN sees infrastructure management so differently, why we believe that people can manage data centers themselves, don't have to move to cloud or turn over control of their infrastructure to a third party. Um, this is really a different way of looking at infrastructure altogether. Um, and we see what's going on in industry is basically major vendors telling you not to manage infrastructure yourself, that you can't manage it, that you're not smart enough, right? To, to, and that's something we think is a wrong assumption. You should be able to manage infrastructure, that infrastructure and automation should be designed in a way that encourages and enables self-management rather than the opposite. And so we really want to ask us this question, right? If infrastructure is so critical to business and IT is so essential to being successful, then why is it so hard to manage? Why haven't we worked to actually solve the root cause of the problem and make infrastructure and IT operationally simple? That seems like a more logical way to solve this problem and really address business needs. And what we've seen happen in pre-cloud era, we were really given this dichotomy of best of breed, commodity do it yourself, which led to what we call legacy IT or very integrated vendor locked and tethered or managed gear, which is cloud uh, or some of the new tethered cloud options that are coming in. Either one of those is really being presented as an A or B choice. Uh, and we don't see that as the requirement for how things should operate, that there are actually incredibly strong vendors in the best of breed category, and there's incredibly strong uh, processes and products in the integrated category, but we think we can pull those two things together. That in our, our vision of the infrastructure, we can have best of breed and commodity and highly integrated and simple to use infrastructure. And that, that really describes the rack end vision very completely for what we're doing and what we're delivering to our customers today. And this is important, not just for enterprise, but for the edge. And the edge is moving very quickly with the exact same requirements and site autonomy. So from our perspective and the code that we write and the way we deliver our solutions, it doesn't matter if it's an enterprise data center with thousands of servers, uh, tens of data centers and thousands of servers, or tens of servers and thousands of data centers, the needs are very similar, and so is the autonomy. And RackN reflects this in what we're delivering. From remote edge sites, uh, this is our edge lab. We're actually running a complete data center infrastructure on four Raspberry Pis. Uh, that same code is being used to power multinational data centers and manage their infrastructure. It's not a specialized set of, of systems. Infrastructure and the way RackN manages it is consistent and repeatable from very small sites to large sites. And that's a very important concept here because it shouldn't be about scale. It should actually be about the integration and what we're building together. Because it's not that whether or not we can actually do this work at a different scale. The problem that we've seen is actually cross domain control. And this is really what we're gonna spend the next 10 minutes talking about. The needs are the same and the cross domain challenges are uh, really what we have to solve to build the integration that people need. As a reminder, RackN Digital Rebar is customer managed platform. We don't have a SaaS, we're not a managed service provider, we don't make hardware, it is software that's installed by our customers on their premises or in their facility so that they can manage that their infrastructure themselves, whether it's a big site or a small site, our customers run their software themselves. RackN does not network in, does not connect, does not require us to have any uh, consulting. It's literally software helping people run their data center better. So let's take that and dive deep into how we do this. And the reason I do that, I want to have a deep dive is because the how does matter. We don't want to give you hyperbole or we've solved all these problems without really being able to explain what we've done because the needs are very real, right? We need easy to use patterns so that everybody is not reinventing how to patch Raiden BIOS configuration and secure operating systems. These are things that should be shared reusable code, which means infrastructure is code. It means that we can package something in a portable unit that is multi-vendor and 
allow people to download and use that as if it was a regular program but applied to infrastructure. And that allows us to be consistently updated or constantly updated and secure that we can integrate into systems that you already have and not assume that every data center is the same and critically help with compliance and visibility. So it's not just about can you automate, but it's actually can you see, can you inspect, can you provide validation that you've actually done the work that you said you were going to do. So to understand why this is so hard, it's important to stop seeing infrastructure as very monolithic. When we look at a customer data center, edge, or enterprise, it's broken into multiple control domains, the operations network, the systems of record, the network that you have to manage, and the systems themselves that have workloads that are in uh, demarcated zones, DMZs. Um, all of these things are actually different security domains. But when we build automation, we actually have to cross all of them. Cloud has it simple and in some ways not secure because they've taken all of these control domains and made them a public API. So while it's very easy to do cloud infrastructure automation, through this process, it also exposes all of the work that you're doing to a single public API. And that also presents challenges of its own. What Racken has done instead is we've been able to integrate across these control domains with a single API for orchestration and then coordinate activities without having to have all of the control domains merged into a single uh, API control surface. It starts with digital rebar platform or DRP as we call it internally uh, where we do the basic bare metal provisioning and that includes multiple control domains so DHCP netboot and running an agent those are actually crossing control domains but out of band management is a different network um, and same with top of rack switch and the APIs for the system and what we see in real data centers is that that's not sufficient. To actually build a system all the way through to completion, we actually have to go into configuration management systems, monitoring systems of records, and CICD pipelines. It's not simply a single API problem. As a matter of fact, it's 10 to 15 APIs in most customer environments. And the thing that Digital Rebar does that's unique in industry is it actually integrates them all into a consistent workflow. Uh, what we describe as an intent-driven workflow, meaning Customers ask for the final state, and Digital Rebar provides a, a process by which all of those integrated pieces can be uh, completed. The thing that makes this a challenge is that it's not just a workflow through a single API. It's actually a workflow that crosses control domains, depending on where you are in the phase of that operation. So for a simple net regular boot provisioning operation, that means going from out-of-band management, which is one network through a, a systems management interface, uh, typically a net boot operation on, a, on one NIC, to a point where you can install an agent on the operating system that is internet facing, perform inventor, inventory firmware updates, things like that, reboot the system through a controlled process, and then take you through a full operating system install all the way through those stages, doing a network configuration, VLAN setup on the switches, application configs. It's a lot of steps. It's a lot of protocols. Each, each swim lane is a protocol and a lot of control domains. This is what makes on-premises self-managed infrastructure hard. It's also what digital rebar is able to do baked into the system itself. If we actually look at this from a broader perspective, say joining an ESXi cluster, it becomes even more complex. In this case, we're adding in post the processes I showed you, installing ESX, setting up networking, talking to a certificate server to get correct certificates installed, verifying the status that everything's right, handing things off to VMware's uh, Cloud Foundations or VCF, and then joining vCenter. So, this is just to get a system up and running, not even day two operations where we have to integrate to even more configured systems. It's a significant number of, of actions across different control domains in which you have to be able to say, do I trust, do I have trust, do I have authority to make these things happen? So it's a very complex sequence of operations to make this happen. And we don't want to collapse all this to a single API or a single control domain. That's, that violates our security rules. We actually want the type of control distribution that we have here. We just need to make sure that we can do a workflow across all the control domains. So when we look at the market, RackN is in a unique space. 
Uh, we see an automation chasm missing between things that just do bare metal provisioning. Foreman is, is one of the leading in industry that may, people might be familiar with, but it really just provides an operating system install. Configuration management like Ansible uh, is very powerful and we integrate into it in many different ways, but it doesn't handle the boot provision. It doesn't cross control domains. Uh, it runs from your terminal window. Uh, infrastructures, code systems like Terraform are designed to work against APIs, once again, from your desktop um, and have trouble doing this type of cross or storing data. Multi-cloud managers, we see uh, leveraging these cloud APIs and dealing with heterogeneity, uh, but they're really much more about orchestration. And so digital rebar is sitting in the middle of this, replacing uh, metal, bare metal provisioning, embracing and extending Ansible and other configuration management platforms, leveraging uh, infrastructures, code, platforms like Terraform, and of course, aligning with multi-cloud managers and providing bare metal APIs in a very cloud-like way. And so that allows us to avoid the ghosts of operations past by actually going through and connecting the dots. So why does this matter for Edge even more than Enterprise? In Edge, we have a control domain problem in that we don't have the major data center. We're usually in an isolated environment where we have to take care of all these things together. So in Edge, we, we don't get to rely on the fact that we have so much data center infrastructure built up. We have to be able to handle state management. We have to deal with intent-driven workflows so we can ask for the final state and maintain that state. We have to be able to do infrastructure as code so we can distribute things into the broader ecosystem in a controlled, reliable way. Even though it's a small data center, maybe three to 10 machines, we still have to be able to describe exactly how that, that system is built and behaves. And finally, we have to be able to deal with multi-vendor brownfield environments. It's because when you start looking at what's going on the edge, it's not going to be a single vendor, uh, a single type of infrastructure, or even a single pattern of infrastructure. Uh, you're going to be crossing different networks. You're going to be working in, in places where different types of machines are necessary or even the, something changes and you have to buy a different vendor's machine. Uh, it could be that you want to mix ARM and Intel AMD systems. It could be that you need GPUs, that you need different boot, boot systems. It could just be that the vendor that you were buying uh, one month uh, is not available and you need to buy hundreds of machines or you might be procuring uh, gear in China that's different than in the United States. So these are very real problems. And RackN is building, has built uh, digital rebar to answer these problems. So we have a whole slide deck uh, that builds up to this slide and I encourage you to check that out. It's actually part one of this uh, deck where I walk through this build up and show how digital rebar is part of these fully integrated clusters that can provision a cluster, use our infrastructure as code systems and then reprovision it to a completely new infrastructure. It's incredibly powerful. Uh, it also talks about how we do multi-site single pane of glass work where you can federate small data centers together uh, into a single view and you can control and distribute infrastructure as code down in a very controlled way without creating any single uh, fault or management uh, control plane. Every data center for us is completely autonomous. So we see having delivered in digital rebar something that doesn't force you to say it's a single vendor or a multi-vendor problem. We're, we, don't, we don't accept that as an answer. And we have also done, not accepted that you have to let a cloud service provider determine all the operating rules. That we can give people autonomy and unlock this challenge of self-determination and integration. That we can truly allow you to manage vendor neutral multi-site infrastructure through our infrastructure automation as code pattern really managing all the control domains uh, for the system. And this, this slide is really a breaking point where we're gonna go through demos. I'm not gonna put them in this video, so you can choose where you wanna go. Um, we do have uh, two different uh, demos, one of our Edge Lab talking about how that works, and another one that shows how we use Ansible in cloud infrastructure to manage our different context switching. And we really drill into the fundamental technology behind the scenes, which we call contexts that allow a workflow to go from one state to another state. And that's what these next slides are gonna show you uh, as we go through uh, the infrastructure. So I encourage you to take a look at um, these different slides and see where we're going with this. Uh, each demo in itself is about 10 minutes long. So 
uh, very easy, should be an uh, enjoyable ride. I hope this was helpful. If you have more questions, please reach out to us at rackend.com. We're happy to uh, walk you through this technology, show you how we handle single site, multi site infrastructure as code, um, and can really change the way you think about data centers. Thank you very much.